another way of doing a vignette is actually to use a garbage mat. And a garbage mat is a way of selecting the bits of a layer that you want to see. Now at the moment we're using the circle effect, which I'm going to get rid of to create a vignette on this black video. So select circle layer and just hit delete. And when I hit delete, I've just got the black video. And the black video presently is at 53% opacity. And I'm going to leave it at that at the moment because I want to be able to see the shot underneath. So my opacity is at about 50%. You can have it at whatever level you want, but it helps to be able to see underneath. And really, I just want to create a vignette pretty much around this area, just to reduce its overall brightness so that it doesn't distract from the rest of the shot. To do that, I'm going to select the layer again, make sure the black video is selected, and then go to Effects. And I'm going to X off Circle, and I'm going to start typing 8. So E, I, G, and by the time I got to E, I, G, I've got under keying something called 8 point garbage mat. I'm going to double click to apply that to the selected layer which is the black video. Go back to my effects controls. Here's my 8 point garbage mat applied. Don't be frightened. We're not actually going to play with any of this text here. We're just going to click on the word 8 point garbage mat. And when we do, over in our program monitor, we've actually got our 8 points that we can move around. So I can now start to drag those around so that the area that's affected is just the area that I want affected. So take these points over here and I might leave it just like that perhaps so that this is the area that's pretty much going to be masked off. Now obviously at the moment I've got very sharp edges to it and there isn't a feather control as we had in the previous one so what we would do is we would apply some kind of blur so if we blur it, we're going to blur the whole thing out and just make the edges a lot softer and then we can play around with the opacity so that it's doing just enough to be less of a distraction. So I'm going to find my blurs under my effects again and I'm going to choose a simple one called fast blur. So I'm going to type fast again and I get down to some options. Now notice I've got ones here that say fast blur in, fast blur out under presets and blurs. That's not what you want. These are animated presets. You want to be under the blur and sharpen category here. So with the black video selected, I just double click fast blur, go back to effects controls, and there's the fast blur. Now, I've got a few options. Obviously I could just whack up the blur by pulling and grabbing and this zero and pulling it right up. And it's going to blur horizontal and vertical, which is fine for me. But notice this one here that says repeat edge, actually says repeat edge pixels. And what it's saying is, if I start to blur, do you want me to make sure that I blur the edge pixels as well as the ones in the middle of your shot? If you actually blur the edge pixels, what you'll end up with is a semi-transparent line around the edge of your shot, which is exactly for this, not what we want. Sometimes you don't want to repeat edge pixels, particularly when you've got something in the middle like, say, a piece of text. If you blur that and you repeat edge pixels, you'll end up with this weird box around the text. Whereas this particular one, where we do have things that come right out to the edge and we don't want it to be semi-transparent around the edge, we must click repeat edge pixels. But let's see what happens if we don't. So I'm going to take my blurriness and just drag it up a bit and you'll instantly see I'm at 85. I've got a semi-transparent edge all the way around. But if I now click repeat edge pixels, you'll see that I've got a soft edge and you'll see that the semi-transparent area is gone and we're blurred right up to the edge. Now I might turn around and say, you know what, I'm not really very happy with this bit here. So I can go back to my 8 point garbage mat, click on it, and I've actually pushed that one slightly off screen. Now if you've done that, you need to go to fit and then you need to change the size. So, so take it to 10% here and then I can actually get it, pull it back to where I want it to be. Once you've actually got the zoom level right and you've pulled them to the right point, bear in mind of course you can pull them right down if ever you want to, then I can go back from 10% to fit and then if I click away you'll see that that's the end result. To see how much of effect it's having just turn off the eyeball for the black video. Before, after, before, after and obviously after it's far less of a distraction. The only other thing to say really is treat this as a push-pull thing. What I mean by that is go in and perhaps reduce the opacity a bit 
and see how it looks by turning on and off the eyeball and then go away and look at something else and come back and do it again because it's quite easy to overdo or underdo these things and rather than just saying oh that'll do and move on play around until you've got something that you feel really does enough to reduce the distraction without drawing attention to itself and that's the big thing a vignette should not generally speaking although there are exceptions generally speaking you don't want a vignette to draw attention to itself now this is a perfect example of where I choose a custom vignette another example where you choose a circular vignette or an elliptical vignette is often when you do something outside in bright sunlight if your action or your talent is in the middle of the screen and you've got bright sunlight right up to the corners what you'll find is that that is very distracting for your viewer and that's when you would often come in and put some kind of vignette just to take the glare off and keep people looking at what matters.